Rene Descartes was a French philosopher and mathematician who was born on March 31, 1596 and died on February 11, 1650. He was educated at four different schools, first at the Collège Royal Henri Le Grand, then the University of Poitiers, then the University of Frenacher, and then Leiden University. In terms of historical context, Descartes is generally considered one of the fathers of modern philosophy. He was the first major figure in the philosophical movement known as rationalism, a method of understanding the world based on the use of reason for obtaining knowledge, along with empiricism, which stresses the use of sense perception rather than pure reason. Rationalism was one of the main intellectual currents of the Enlightenment, a, cult a cultural movement spanning the 17th and 18th centuries that revolutionized the Western world. Along with men like John Locke, John Hobbes, and Voltaire, Descartes spurred society to re-examine its traditions and institutions, leading to major societal upheaval. Both the American and French revolutions were based on Enlightenment theories, in part from Descartes. And the way we approach science, math, philosophy, and the idea of self were radically transformed during this period. Descartes was both influenced and influenced many important philosophers. His most notable influences were Plato, Aristotle, and Archimedes. The most notable people who he influenced were essentially all of Western philosophy, but most notably uh, he influenced Sir Isaac Newton and caused the invention of calculus. Aside from the theorem that we'll talk about today, his theorem of circles, Descartes also had one of the most important contributions to math, and that is analytical geometry, or the Cartesian plane. Uh, he made re uh, the revolutionary discovery that he could solve problems in geometry by converting them into problems in algebra. He showed that curves could be represented in terms of x and y on a two-dimensional plane, and hence as equations in algebra. The Cartesian coordinate system used was uh, named in his honor. What up, my rock stars? We're back here with another rock star math, and today we're proving Descartes' theorem of circles. And here to explain what it is is my main man, Ronnie Mukhopatra. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a little switch up from your regularly scheduled programming. We're taking it back to 1643 for some relaxing math. We're going to be joined today by Matt, Ronnie, and Luke. We're going to be teaching you all about Descartes' Circle Theorem. Stay tuned for more. What up, my rock stars? So basically, Descartes' Circle Theorem proves that there, for every four kissing mutually tangent circles, that there is a quadratic equation that can be solved to find a fourth circle tangent to the three given. So to, before we start proving the Circle Theorem itself, we have to prove a necessary trigonometric identity. So. Basically, we start with if alpha plus beta plus gamma equals 2 pi, then cosine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of beta plus cosine squared of gamma equals 1 plus 2 times cosine of alpha times cosine of beta times cosine of gamma. So to prove it, basically we just plug in three values for alpha, beta, gamma. Alpha equals pi over 3, beta equals 2 pi over 3, gamma equals pi. Therefore, these three angles equal uh, 2 pi. Then we just plug it in, and we just make sure that everything's equal to each other. Step two of part one is to prove this identity. Two times cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared beta plus cosine squared gamma minus three equals four times cosine alpha times cosine beta times cosine gamma minus one. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna split the left and the right, and we're gonna call this the LHS and the RHS for left-hand side and right-hand side. So we're going to start off with s equals cosine 2 alpha plus cosine 2 beta plus cosine 2 gamma. So as you recall from pre-calc, pre we're going to remember that the double angle identity, cosine of 2 alpha equals 2 cosine squared alpha minus 1. If we sub, if we sub in our identity for the, into the s equals equation, we ultimately get s equals 2 times cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared b plus cosine squared gamma minus 3 equals cosine of cosine 2 alpha plus cosine 2 beta plus cosine 2 gamma. So now, also, we can, we can translate cosine 2 alpha plus cosine 2 beta into 2 cosine of alpha plus beta times cosine alpha minus beta, which also equals 
2 cosine 2 pi minus gamma times cosine alpha minus beta, which also equals 2 cosine gamma times cosine of alpha minus beta. We can 2 pi, uh, 8 alpha plus beta equals 2 pi minus gamma because alpha plus beta plus gamma equals 2 pi. So if we keep scrolling down, we ultimately get that S can also equal 4 times cosine alpha times cosine beta times cosine gamma minus 1 equals cosine of 2 alpha plus cosine 2 beta plus cosine 2 gamma. Therefore, the left hand side equals the right hand side here. So part 2 is using the law of cosines to find cosines of all necessary angles. As you can see, that's the, uh, the diagram that we previously showed with the three tangent circles um, tangent to a bigger circle with a smaller circle in between those three circles. Um, if we let A, B, and C be the vertices of the triangle that's formed when we connect the radiuses of the circles, um, this, this equation is what occurs. These are like the sides and that's the different radiuses of the circle. And we also let R4, the radius of the small circle O, which is the red circle in the middle, you also get these equations. Um, and we also let the different angles of the triangle be the angle AOB be gamma, angle BOC is alpha, and angle AOC equals uh, beta. Uh, therefore, we can use the law of cosines on um, the different angles of the triangle. Just to recall, this is um, a simplified version of the law of cosines, and if we go back to the uh, Descartes theorem, it's the same thing, it's just that instead of A, B, and C, A and O, B and O, and A, B are just lines. So if we do the law of cosines for angle gamma, uh, this is what occurs, and if you just simplify by simply plugging in the different radiuses that make up each line, you get this equation, and then just um, so, uh, adding everything together, you get this equation, and then finally this equation on the bottom. So next, we uh, simply use the formula for curvature, which is k equals 1 over r, and replace all of the radius variables, so r1, r2, r3, and r4, um, in the equation, and what we get is this equation right here and all we do is simply set this big fraction into um, lamb different lambdas since they're all pretty similar to get a simplified version of cosine of gamma is 1 minus uh, lambda subscript 3 cosine of beta is 1 minus lambda subscript 2 and cosine of alpha is 1 minus uh, lambda subscript 1 Okay, so the last step is just putting together all the information that we got from parts one and two. So in part one, we proved that this equation is equal to this one. And so then we're gonna use the second equation and we're gonna plug in the cosines that we got from part two. And we get the equation one minus lambda subscript one squared plus one minus sub la lambda subscript two squared plus one minus lambda subscript, subscript three squared equals one plus two times one minus lambda times one minus lambda two times one minus lambda three. So when simplified, you get this equation right here. Dividing both sides by lambda one times lambda two times lambda three, we get this equation right here. So ultimately, the curvature's value, along with the large fraction that we got in part two, can now be substituted in for all the lambda values. So when we substitute them in, we get this uh, rather complicated equation. But ultimately, when we simplify it down, uh, we get here and uh, continually, continuously simplifying it so we get a, a more easy to look at uh, equation, we get the final theorem that we've been trying to get all along and the theorem's completed. Thank you for watching. We hope you learned a lot about Descartes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Oh, <laughs> shit.